Thanks, Rick and Sue. Hello again. Welcome back after the weekend. Good to have you with us. We begin tonight with the life and death emergency no one saw coming. A healthy teenager whose heart suddenly stopped beating. Perth boy Bradley Golding owes his life to the strangers who revived him. You're about to meet those real life heroes and hear the dramatic triple zero phone call. As Mark Gibson reports, Brad's survival story has many valuable lessons for all of us. Hi, yeah, we need an ambulance urgently. We've had a, um, a guy collapse, um, he's gone blue in the face, he's not moving and he's barely breathing. We'd never known Bradley to have any house problems whatsoever. This is a very unusual event. The first reaction was that he was going to die. No, you can hear me, Brad. Come on, Brad. Stay, stay, with, stay, with, us. Come on. stay with us. Come, Come on, Brad. Brad. Not 20 minutes prior, you know, I dropped him down, we were laughing and joking, and, and next minute, you know, effectively he died. Bradley Golding was a typical 16-year-old kid, fit, healthy, an aspiring soccer star, until the day his heart stopped and his life very nearly ended. I can't believe it happened. It's just, I would never think it would happen to me. There's probably a less than one in 10,000 chance of this happening to an average teenager or young adult. It was February 5, the year's first training session at Belia Oval in Perth South. All right, boys in two, go for a run now. The new teammates had just met that evening. Strangers thrown into a life and death emergency. Hey, Curtis! We need your help! Hey, lads, what's happened over there? We get over there. From what I'm led to believe, he literally just jogging one minute, dropped to the floor the next. Rushing to Brad's aid, a 17 year old Curtis Ray. What's his name? Brad. Brad. Brad, can you hear me? First day, guys. And 23 year old Sav Ferraro. Call an ambulance. Funny story like I uh, started TAFE the day before, and uh, they were meant to have a uh, first aid course two weeks down there, but they couldn't fit us in. So they brought us down to do first aid that first day, and then the next day, first day of training, and had to do first aid. It was so weird. <laughs> With young Bradley's life hanging in the balance, some quick thinking and cool heads were needed. One of the coaches grabbed the nearest phone and called for help. What you're about to hear is the actual triple zero call. Ambulance, what's the address of the emergency? Um, we're actually at Belia Oval, Lakefront what? Avenue, Belia. Okay, is he awake? Um, he's barely awake. Is he conscious? He's sort of... No, he's not conscious. He's not, is he breathing? Uh, he's breathing, not really, no. Speed is of the essence, time is absolutely essential. Right, tell you more three. One, two, three. Careful. They turned him over gently because they thought he'd originally dislocated his shoulder or something and passed out um, and saw that he was already at this point turning blue. He's inhaling but not exhaling very well. Put your ear next to his mouth. Can you feel or hear any breathing? Can you, can you hear if he's breathing? Just to his head back. No, I don't think he is. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's not okay. breathing, no. I'm going to tell you how to give mouth to mouth, OK? OK, she's going to give some some instructions, mate. OK, with his head tilted back, pinch his nose closely, completely cover his mouth. With your mouth, then blow two bets into his lungs. She's just told me, so I can give you instructions. Hold his nose, tip his head back. No, no, mouth to mouth, quickly. Pinch his nose, tip his head back, and two, two deep breaths. Watch his chest rise. The chest should rise with each breath. Chest should rise one, yeah. Second one. By this stage, a teammate had contacted Brad's mother, Jill, via Facebook. Contact me urgently. Bradley's collapsed, he's turning blue and can't breathe. My heart went to my mouth. I thought, what the hell's going on? OK, now listen no, no, carefully. You need to place the heel of your hand on the breastbone with the, in yes. the centre of his chest, right between the nipples. Yeah. Put your other hand on top of that, OK? The need to push down firmly two inches with the heel of your hand touching the chest. Now listen carefully. I'm just going to count with you, OK? Yes, hang on. Yes, go on. So it's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, one two, two, three, four. four. One, two, one, two three, three, four. four. Continue telling us it was 30 compressions, two breaths, just continually reminding us. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 30 pumps, it's 30 pumps, two breaths, 30 pumps. I can hear the ambulance. You can hear it, can you? No, nah, lads, oh, he's blazing on the mat. Right. Come on, let's, no, let's, let's no, roll him over. Good. Oh, oh, four. Blood coming out of his mouth. That does not good. There's blood coming out of his mouth! Just clear his mouth, tilt him onto his side. Clear, clear his, his mouth. mouth, OK? Come on, Brad. Stay with us. Keep, keep going even when the ambulance gets here. Come on, Brad. I know you're awake, Brad. Just stay on, with Brad. us. Stay with us. Come on, Brad. So they had to pull back then on doing mouth to mouth, but literally the timing was just perfect in as much that 
that had started happening and Ambos had turned up. Just keep going, do not stop what you're doing, OK? Because they're doing a really good job. OK, the ambulance is here. So there are they. I'll let you go, but don't stop doing the compressions until they tell you that you can, OK? I was immediately met by one of the paramedics who held onto my hand and, to be honest, she was shaking like a leaf. And I thought, if she's shaking like that, what am I supposed to be like? But I was told that he'd had a cardiac arrest. Cardiac arrest meant to me that he died. His heart had stopped and they needed to get it back into rhythm. Straight afterwards, burst into tears, and the first reaction was that he was going to die, especially with the blood coming out of the mouth. I was always told as a kid that meant death. Even if he was to survive, like, as my coach was saying to me over the phone, that he was in a bad state, so I thought he might possibly have some brain damage, but I kept trying to keep positive. 16-year-old Bradley Golding wasn't out of the woods yet. Bradley was put into an induced coma once he'd hit Freo, which obviously meant then that he wasn't able to breathe on his own. He spent 33 hours in an induced coma before doctors at Fremantle Hospital delivered some good news. It's a miracle, really. He's waking up, he's squeezing our hand, he understands what we're telling him. Um, and at that point, I just felt it total elation. It turns out Brad has an abnormal heart rhythm. After a month in hospital, he's home now with a permanent reminder of his brush with death. So where has it actually gone in? Can you see yes. it? Yes, uh, there. All oh, right. He's been fitted with his very own defibrillator. It's a bit heavy and it sticks out a bit. If for any reason Brad's heart decides to go haywire again, what it'll do is give a small shock directly to the heart, um, which will stop his heart and restart it then in the right beats. If it fires off and defibrillates them internally, sometimes they will be aware of it as a little jolt. Um, some people, in fact, notice very little. Cardiologist Dr John O'Shea is the WA president of the National Heart Foundation. This story is a great example of the uh, value of bystander CPR, as we call it, the ability of other people in the area to quickly realise what's going on and undertake CPR, external cardiac massage, and you can keep someone alive for a long time by doing CPR. This is a big killer. Uh, it's more, if you actually take into account breast cancer, shootings and road traffic accidents, more people die of cardiac arrest than all three of those put together. Wow. And I want to stop that. Brad's soccer career might be on hold, but he's on a mission to have mobile defibrillators at venues across Perth. Personally, I think it's important for all sporting clubs at any age to have the defibrillators on site, because that is what saves the lives. These days, they're so advanced, the machines will tell you what to do. You can attach the pads to the patient. The data in memory. Push flashing button to erase data and perform rescue. In the absence of defibrillators, there's something we can all do. We are always preaching the value of everybody knowing how to do CPR because one day it might be on the sporting field or on the beach or in the street, you may be called on to save a life and it's a marvellous thing if you can do it. Somebody has got to be there all the time that's qualified in first aid because you never know when you're going to need it. And it doesn't matter what age, what colour, what creed, what male or female, you know, it could be anybody, it could be your son. Brad Golding is alive today thanks to the heroism of strangers. Hardly knew any of them and now we're a close-knit bunch and get along really well. <laughs> so. I'm known as the CPR boy. <laughs> the cool head of the St John's call taker. Now listen carefully, I'm just going to count with you, OK? Yes and the brilliant work of paramedics and doctors. Really, in my mind, you know, Bradley wasn't meant to go that night. Somebody looking over him, sending him back, saying it wasn't his time. Can't thank Curtis and Sav enough for what they've done for me. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here right now. The real heroes would be the, all the medical staff, I'd say, because they do it every day, but what we did, I mean, saved the kid's life, and i definitely recommend anyone should get their first aid. And if we can make people aware, that's all we want to do. Just so happy. Like, saving someone's life is just absolutely massive. It's something I'm always going to remember for the rest of my life. Brad's got a bit longer on the sidelines, but hopes to be playing soccer again soon. Mark Gibson reporting there.